Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics by Dr. Aran. First of all, thank you so much for all the love and support. The videos are going mind-blowing. Today's topic of choice, we're going to talk about a very beautiful topic. The topic is hydrocephalus. Yes, hydrocephalus. Before starting any segment, we always have a quote and what is the quote for today? The quote for today is, what do you want to achieve? What do you want to achieve is on the other side of the fear. What do you want to achieve is on the other side of the fear. Fight for your fear. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. All you have to do is put positive vibrations in this, in your life, and that's it. Today's topic of choice is hydrocephalus. The subheadings are causes, clinical features, investigations, and management. Number one, what is the cause? Why does hydrocephalus happens? Hydrocephalus happens, there's a problem in the CSF pathway. Let's learn the whole picture of CSF pathway. So in the CSF pathway, we all know that we have something known as lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and fourth ventricle. If I ask you a simple question, lateral ventricle and third ventricle are connected by which foramen? The answer is foramen of Monero. And third ventricle and fourth ventricle are connected by which foramen? The answer is very important equiratal canal of sylvius and this is the most commonest cause of non-communicating hydrocephalus yes please remember exam question which is the most commonest cause of non-communicating hydrocephalus it is equiratal stenosis next question what are the clinical features so clinical features whenever there is a equiratal stenosis the lateral ventricle and third ventricle very importantly they dilate and very importantly and the patient is going to have a macrocephaly large head yes can you see the picture there's microcephaly and if i ask your question how do you define microcephaly head circumference more than how much standard deviation macrocephaly is head circumference more than two standard deviation and microcephaly is head circumference more than minus two standard deviation so head circumference less than minus two microcephaly head circumference more than plus two standard deviation that is macrocephaly what are the clinical features of hydrocephalus patient number one macrocephaly number two very importantly dilated scalp pains i can see this picture right now dilated scalp pains and the, the patient will have and a sunset sign so dilated scalp pains sunset sign macrocephaly these are the clinical features of hydrocephalus what is the investigation of choice so hydrocephalus usually is a newborn problem so anterior fontanelle is open so the answer is transcranial ultrasound so transcranial ultrasound or mri you can get it done last question what is the treatment for this problem so hydrocephalus lateral ventricle third ventricle dilated equiratal stenosis the treatment is vp shunt what is vp shunt ventriculo peritoneal shunt what is vp shunt ventriculo peritoneal shunt so that is very important points for hydrocephalus let's quickly revise again hydrocephalus number one the problem is with the csf pathway number two which is the most commonest cause of non-communicating hydrocephalus equiratal stenosis clinical feature how the patient will have macrocephaly dilated scalp veins sunset sign and sutural diostosis what is the sutural diostosis suture there's an opening of the suture because of the CSF pressure that's why and what's the investigation of choice MRI also is option and also you can get transcranial ultrasound and the treatment of choice is VP shunt that is ventriculo peritoneal shunt so these are the top 20 points important for exam purpose all the latest questions we have covered and that's it and remember before leaving we always have a quote whatever you want to achieve is on the other side of the fear be hopeful be positive everything will make sense by the end of the journey so please take care and thank you